Hello ladies and gentlemen folks, my name is XAM Kirby, but you can call me Dan. Today I'm bringing you a new series to the channel which is tier list. Now obviously you've seen these, these were big in 2019, tier list systems. Essentially, if you know you know, but for anyone who doesn't know, you've got these tiered lists where you can go through a certain subject and you can rank them from what you think is the greatest all the way down to the worst. It's sort of like a ranked from best to worst, just more put out on a grid rather than talking elongated about it, blah blah blah. Today we are doing Black Ops 1 map. Now, I thought I'd start off the series with something I'm very passionate about. Black Ops 1, if you don't know, was my favourite Call of Duty. So we are just going to go through every Call of Duty Black Ops 1 map. And we're going to go them in alphabetical order because it's just the way I've got it uh, set up. If you do want to try this yourself and tweet me what you guys think about the Black Ops 1 maps, I will leave a link to this actual page in the description. This is not something I've done. This has been set up for me. It looks really good, really professional. Now, what I've done with the uh, tiers, I've just kind of renamed them. I want to have my own little thing going. So we've got Instant Classic. That's like the top. It's an Instant Classic map. Like it's something that you know, it's just brilliant. Then we've got great map, you know, so it's like, it's great, but you know, it's not quite there. Then we've got, okay, you know, it's a, it's a map I wouldn't say no to. Then again, it's a map I wouldn't go out of my way to play if there was one of the better maps. Then we've got Mare, which is like, okay, you're a map in a game, I get it. So, you know, you're there. And then there's no vote. And I thought of something different for this, but just for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go with no vote because in Black Ops 1, you could vote for maps. You could choose your maps. Remember that? Remember when you could vote for your own map? Uh, Modern Warfare. Anyway, we're going to do this no vote just as, like, this is a map. If it came up in the vote rotation, I would just say no. Which is going to be interesting if, like, two of the two... It's going to be interesting if more than one map gets put in a no vote. Because if those two came up on a thing, would I Would I not vote? Probably not. But anyway, we're just going to crack on with it with Array. Now, Array was a big snowy map. It had a big large middle bit. Kind of had a radar tower. It also had a trick shot area to the side. Had like a back out the round bit map area. It had certain bits. It was sort of like... It had the main building in the middle. And then there was just sort of this outer layer outside. Now, with Array... It's one of those maps that, like, it wasn't the greatest map, but then again, it wasn't the worst map. So, I think I'm going to put it in the okay one. This is, like, this is the reason being is it was okay because of trick shots. Uh, tubing, it wasn't that great for, uh, but that's only one style of play. As an actual map, it was one of those maps you had to be in the mood to play, especially for me. I felt like it was one of those maps I really had to just, I, if on some days, it would be, like, yeah, I'm, I'll play Array, you know, it's a really cool map. And then there'll be other days where I just, I just can't be asked. That I can't be asked to play Array. So we're going to leave that there. Um, Cracked is the next. No, sorry. Berlin Wall is the next one. Now, Berlin Wall was part of the First Strike DLC. And Berlin Wall is a map which is set in Germany, obviously, to do with the Berlin Wall. And it had these, like, it had sort of like a, a number eight layout, like a square eight layout. Like... So I'm trying to do this so it's on screen. A square out layout. Now in the circle bits where were um, out of bounds areas. So this is where you'd have the turrets. This is when people used to cross the wall like during the Second World War. Uh, or the Cold War actually. This was set during the Cold War. Forget that. Because the Second World War is what we had the Berlin Wall for. Anyway. It was kind of a no-go zone. It was a no man's area. It was also known as a no man's land. So... It was sort of a cool feature to the map because it was this area where players weren't allowed to go in. It was part of the map, but you could sort of get away with going there if you threw smoke grenades. But then again, it's not really worth it because when you get into the middle, it's a really hectic uh, part of the map. I think you could drive X RCXDs through this. I'm not entirely sure on that. Anyway, with Berlin Wall, I'm going to put it as a map because it wasn't like... Originally, I wanted to have like... I was thinking, okay, it was an okay map. Maybe even a great map, but it was a bit of a meh map because you kind of had the, like, it was a, it was a classic version of a three-lane map where you kind of had just the middle was just a cluster. It was such a cluster. And then you had, obviously, the two laneways where you could snipe across. So domination for this was fun. But ones like um, Search and Destroy, Capture the Flag... It was a bit, you know, it wasn't quite that great. But we're just going to leave it. Next up is Convoy. Now, Convoy is a map where it has, like, a hole in the middle, has the two, like, laneways in the middle over a bit. It has a big middle road area, and then it has, like, the buildings to the side. I'm actually going to put this, weirdly, in the great map. And here's my case. Like, w this was a really great map to play because you had, like, the buildings to the left. If, we, if you're playing from, like, like, the, um... 
Oh, I think it was the uh, defending side. You had the big building to the left, which people would camp in, fair enough. Then you had, like, the little, like, park area around the side. And then you had, like, the other side. You had, like, all these buildings. But then you had the middle bit. And the middle bit having not only, like, the bridge, but also having the hole in the middle, having, like, the equipment around the side. There was just multiple angles. And that's what's missing from some of these Call of Duty maps. There was just multiple ways you could attack the enemy and there was multiple directions you could go in and each one felt unique it was sort of not a three lane map even though it did have the three lanes each lane had its own intertwining three lane system so it's sort of like a like a cluster again i'm going to try not to use cluster too much in this video but to me convoy was a great map it was definitely a map i loved playing as part of the dlc so for this one next one is cracked now, when I first played it, Cracked wasn't that great a map. Cracked was a bit of a, oh, uh, it's a too big a map. You know, it's not as good as the small to medium maps, which we'll get onto in this video. But then it sort of grew on me a bit. But still, it still has that kind of, so it's a map where it's got two buildings in the middle. It's also got buildings around the outside. It's got very, for tubers, it's great because tubers use the, like, slanted roofs, which I'm going to be saying a lot in this one. But for me, Cracked, like, it had the middle bit, which was sort of elevated. But apart from that, it's lacking some sort of... There was a trick shot spot. There are some really good spots in here. But it's it's going to go in the okay. And it's going to go in the okay with a raid because it's just like... It's a meh. It's a... It's, it's not a meh, sorry. Meh is the other one. It's a... Oh, do I put it meh now? Because I said it was a meh. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like... What I'll do is I'll put it at the bottom of okay. Because what I can do with these like tiers is I can go from best to worst, from left to right with the tiers. So... We're going to go with an, with an okay. I feel like it's an okay one. Next up, we have Crisis. And unfortunately, really unfortunately, I love Crisis, right? In a, in a bit of a way, because it's bad. It's one of those things that's so bad that you just... It, it's, it's so bad, sometimes it's good, but then again, I can't. Like, any... Like, when it was the no DLC, if you had a Ray Cracked or any of the other maps we, we're going to list off. I don't want to, you know, spoilers, but Crisis was just bottom. Crisis was just that map no one wanted to play. And to be fair, even though it's got, like, the really cool big building, it's got, like, the little middle bit where you can sort of go over the top in the middle or you can go underneath. And then it's got, like, that little rock which people used to camp on. And then it's got, like, that sort of weird indoor area. Like, I'm not a big fan of maps where it's, like, sort of... The majority is indoors, sort of. I know that I know that statement's going to come back to bite me because I'm going to see a map which is majority indoors. I'm going to say, oh, that's amazing. And everyone's going to be like, oh, yeah, you said this about um, Crisis. But it doesn't, doesn't work for Crisis. Crisis was a map which really the name sort of speaks for itself. So, unfortunately, Crisis is going to go into the no vote one because... No one wanted to vote for Crisis. No one, not even the tubers, the bank shotters. Crisis was one of those maps you, if you had to go out of your way to play. Moving on, we have Discovery. Now, this is an Arctic themed map set in a research. So this is Discovery. Discovery was a snowy map. Now it's weird that like Call of Duty Black Ops had a lot of maps that were snow based. And I really liked like the snow backdrop of them, but Discovery was sort of good because you had like these um, big station areas which people could camp in but you couldn't see much of a map. Then you had like this middle bridge area but then you had like a, like a ravine which went like under and you could sort of go under the bridge like that. And you also had, if I remember correctly, you had like at the top of a ravine there were these little bits of cliff that you could shoot. So it gets points for being one of those maps which you can dynamically change even though it wasn't that much if you saw someone running there like some like level 23 and you just shot it and you just see him fall to death it's amazing and you also had this really long bridge along the side of a map where you could just control that bit now obviously being a sniper in black ops the snipers weren't that great so it's not really that amazing but what you could do with there if you could like you could catch people off guard you could protect objectives so for me discovery is gonna go in the great map category because i loved playing discovery discovery was one of those maps as well where it uh, it was it was open but it it worked it worked as well as like in the middle you had like a bridge sort of going under a bridge and then you had the ravine underneath so it was it was multiple layers to the map it just i uh, was it was just so good right so 
Discovery is going to go there for that reason. Now we move on to Drive-In. And a lot of people are going to hate me for this, but Drive-In is going straight into the no vote. And there's, there's a reason why. It won't go as down, far down as Crisis. Now, Drive-In for me is too open a map. Now, I, I say this in a way like Red Dead Redemption is too much of an open world game. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the game, it's a great game. It's a great game, but it's just got too much of an open world feel. You had to travel like five minutes by horse, blah, blah, blah. Drive-In was one of those maps where you had, obviously it was like a drive-in car park. So you had like the office and then you had like the big projector board, which had like a hole in the middle, which you could see through. Apart from those factors, you had like a little building on one side, a little building on the other side. And then you had like a little trailer sort of in the middle. <coughs> Excuse me. And it was one of those maps which was just, for me, too open. It was too, one of those maps I couldn't really have a good game on. And it's not because, uh, you know, I, everyone has their off day. But it was one of those maps where it just, it didn't click. Nothing was there. I, I would rather not play drive-in. Which is going to annoy a lot of people because Drive-In was a good map for a lot of people. But Drive-In for me personally was not one of those maps. Now, we move on to Firing Range. And it, it's, it's you know where this is going. Instant classic. Firing Range it's, is an amazing map. At the start, when I first played Black Ops, I hated Firing Range. Because it was so... Because I the map was so small and like it was so difficult to get kills. But with Firing Range now, it just... it like. Playing it even now, it it just it works so well. The whole like little crow's nest and the buildings, and I'm not just saying this because it's a popular map. It just it has that feel where you can like be in different parts of a map and you instantly know what you're gonna do, how you can control it. It it's, it's just a instant classic. It's got to go there. So moving on to the next one, we have grid. Now grid, again, it's it's got to go into the instant classic, and like here's why. So. Grid is obviously a snow-based map, gets instant points. Um, it also had like a really cool uh, middle area, like a lot of the maps do really, but this one was really cool because it had like two buildings opposite side, which you could really like, uh, you could shoot people from. Had like a bit of a back area, which is kind of like a bit out there, but still it added to the map. But the main reason this goes into an instant classic is because back in Black Ops 1, they had RCXD holes, which which they didn't do in Black Ops 2, 3, or 4, which is something I'll talk about in another video. But the RCXD holes, it, lit it was just like a little hole like that, which you could put the RCXD through, and you could get into, like, areas, which they should be doing, like, in camper areas. Like, even in, like, Modern Warfare, they should have places where the Wilson can sort of, like, on Gunrunner, there's this bit where, by the, like, train tracks... You can, the, the people like camp by the B flag. You should have that little area which goes off to the right next to the stairs. You should have like a little gap there and the Wilson should be able to drive through it, go up a little like ramp and then go behind and like take out the enemy. It, it That should be more incorporated. C score streak should have more of a like tactical advantage. And Grid had this one where you could just either go from the middle of the map and you could go up to the top of one of the buildings where the campers were or you could go down into the middle where they were running to, or you could go outside again, and it, it just had this, like, four-way system, which would just... If no one was using Fact Jacket, you could, like, take out a camping team that would, like, camp in the objective, and it was just amazing. So, also, Grid is just one of those maps you, you just love to play. It's, it's small to medium, it's very easy to learn, and it's just great. Moving on to the next map, we have Hangar 18. Now, Hangar 18 was part of the Annihilation DLC, I want to see. Anyway, Hangar 18 is obviously in a uh, hangar for a Blackbird, which was one of the kill streaks, and you actually had a Blackbird in the middle of a map. And you also had the, like, you had a sniper tower on one side, you had a building on the other side, and then in the middle is a big hangar area where you could, like, control from the middle. It was a great map, so for that reason, it's going to go into the great map. I might put it at the top. It doesn't go into instant classic, because I feel like, even with like the middle bit of a hangar, or like, this map was great as well, weirdly, just off topic, for capture the flag. When you had to do the marathon, and you had to do the capture the flag, like run through the middle, no one goes in the middle on capture the flag on hangar 18. So if you ever try and do the marathon pro achievements, you can just go like that. Moving on next, we have Hanoi. And Hanoi is a prison map where it's set at nighttime in one of the Vietnam prisons. 
and it's 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 you know where it's going it's going top of the instant classic and it's going there because a rcxd holes again it had one in the middle of the map which was just really cool you could even bank shot tomahawk through there people would place attack inserts under this like staircase where the rcxd hole was and you could just like throw your tomahawk and bang it would take them off sport hanoi also for tubers it really gave tubers a chance to shine it has so many roofs and so many like bank shotting and tubing was just oh, i was liquid gold in this map right moving on what are we on now havana is this havana i think it's havana okay havana unana havana i'm going to put hmm it's a tricky one but i'm going to put havana here right in between hangar 18 and convoy now havana i love havana obviously set in havana hence the name yeah, and it's a really cool map it's a really good map for like snipers because you can snipe across to the areas it's a really cool map because you've got two buildings either side the only downside to havana is it just it's one of those maps where it the spawns aren't as good as they could be and it just it has that sort of feel to it where it's just when you're spawning at constant sides it's a nightmare to try and get back into the action and then there was that area where there was like the fountain bit and that was a spawn trap like People stayed by that fountain, head glitched, and all you could do is just run around there on like team deathmatch and try and kill them. Because there would be people in the middle and you just spawn and yeah, that's the only downside with Havana. Havana was a really good map though, so you know, props to Havana for getting at the top of it. Anyway, next one we have Hangar 18. And Hangar 18 was a remake of a World at War map called Cliffside. Uh, and cliffside was the one where you just had the japanese snipers just and pretty much with hazard hazard is on like a luxurious golf court type thing so you had like one side you had like the teeing off part at the other side you had the hole and then you had like a gazebo above where the snipers could be and then you've just got this massive line of sight right down this like the, the putting range pretty much where the snipers would just take each other out but then you had like the outside bits where the snipers could go but then on one side you had a building which led to the middle and the other side you had like a little sort of sort of crow's nest but more of like a a rectangular crow's nest where the snipers could just overwatch and then you had like a massive long area along a cliffside hence why the map was originally called cliffside but they changed it to hazard um with this one i'm going to put it into okay and it's going to go top of okay because i love hazard as a map I love the design, I love the feel of it. Only issues I have with it are it was mainly snipers in this, mainly snipers. And if it wasn't snipers, there would be people on the side, on the like little laneways with claymores and you could just like, you would not get past. Like you could not flank the snipers. They would just put down claymore after claymore after claymore and you'd just be like, bang, aha, I've got flak jacket, run a bit further, bang, claymore. And I know you should use like hacker, but you, it was it was so annoying to try and get an advantage because even when you got like into their spawn, the spawns would flip and then they're the other side of the map. So you've just got to go all. And by this time they planted the claymores and they, oh, it, it was just annoying. So it's an okay map. It's a map that, you know, you've got to be in the right mood to play. So moving on, we have Hotel. And Hotel is obviously a map based in a hotel, but it had like this middle like, like bar area sort of outside bar area and in this map it had elevators so it, you had like each one had like a lift where you could just go up and it was amazing because even though i, I hate claymores you could just place a claymore on a lift like that and they'd just go floor one bing and it, people would just explode it was so much fun and the one one major issue though is it's 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 an inside map. It's one of those maps where the majority of the action takes place inside. Um, but I would put it at the bottom of a great map because I loved playing Hotel. Hotel was was a great map. It's just the whole like this is inside, this is inside, this is sort of inside. There's an inside bit here, and then there's the bit over here which is sort of inside. So it's it's a yeah it's. Yeah. It's one of those. It's one of those maps where it's. I, I, I love it. I love the map. It just sometimes it didn't click, and you'll know if you if you've played Hotel, you know what I'm on about. Moving on, we have Jungle. When you're out here in this jungle, it's wild round here. You don't want to spend a night round here. 
It's a daytime map. It's a daytime map which got flooded in Black Ops 4, but once again, we're not talking about Black Ops 4. Now, when this was brought back, along with, like, uh, Firing Range and the other two maps we'll get onto in this list, I was really confused. I was just like, really? We're putting Jungle back? Because, for me, Jungle is a meh map. And this is, this is Jungle Black Ops 1, okay? This is Black Ops 1 Jungle. Black Ops 1 Jungle was very meh. And I know for like tubing it was great, for cross maps it was great, but <laughs> there's, first of all the middle area is cool because you've got the bridge going across and you can look at it from the cliff, you can also look at it from that little like area bit which you could like, you know what I'm on about where you could look from like the cl top of a cliff to like this area bit so you had that and then you had like, it, you had multiple areas which I've been saying is really good, then you had like the side bit where you had like the little side hut and then behind that was the cliff. Um, and then in the back area, you had like you had to go up towards the sea flag, which was down by the cliff. It was it was a really well structured laned map. It didn't work in Black Ops One. Really didn't. It didn't click. Didn't really work. Obviously, you had like bits where if you were on um, the sea flag side, you could throw a grenade over to the A flag side, where as they run down from A flag. You, if you played Grand War, you had like nine people there, bang, entire team gone. You've already got your chopper gun, and you're just calling it in, calling in the dogs. Uh, didn't didn't click for me. Really, really did not like it in Black Ops 1. And that's just my own personal opinion. Like, I've played Jungle so many times on Black Ops 1. I really didn't like it in Black Ops 1. It really just, it, it just did not work as a map, unfortunately. So it's going to go into meh. Now, moving on, we have Kowloon. Kowloon was set in a Chinese city, I want to say. It was it was an Asian city. I'm guessing it was China. And it you are essentially on the rooftops. It's part of the mission where you, Hudson, and Weevil... No, Hudson, Weevil, and the guy who created the Nova 6 in the campaign can't remember his name. Really, really bad, that. But you, you essentially you have to go for rooftops. I think there was a, they were going to have a map like it called Rooftops, which is, again, for another video. But Kowloon was set at night. It was in an Asian city, and you were just running along rooftops in the campaign. So they sort of designed it around that. And you had, like, this massive B-52 come over the top of the map to begin with, which just scared the crap out of you first time you played it. Also had a really cool feature, which was zip lines. Zip lines just kind of... You had like two zip lines. The only problem with zip the zip lines though is you had that like animation where it'd be like, okay, just I know I know someone's shooting at me, but let me just quickly get the zip line in and oh I'm dead already. So it also had like an RCXD hole at like in the middle bit, you could sort of put an RCXD down and it would go down these like pipes to the bottom bit where they'd spawn and well sort of spawn as they were running towards the middle, which was really cool as well. So for that reason it's going to go in a great map, but I don't know where I want to put it. I want to put it like, I think it's it's not as great as Hotel, but it's still a great map. I love it. Like it also, I, I'm doing it a disservice because it, it's had so much to it. It's had so much like, it was one of those maps as well where because I was so new to Call of Duty, I fell off this map so many times because I, I just saw it was on the rooftop. So I was just like, okay, I can just go down here. Oh no, I'm dead. Oh, no, it's okay. I can just run off this roof. Oh, I'm dead. So until you, like, get the layout, if you're playing split screen on this, you don't know what's roof and what's map. So you're just like, Wah. and you're, yeah, pretty much dead. But it's it's a really great... And by the way, I really hated this map when I first played it. I just I just want to put that out there. I, I absolutely detested it as part of the first strike. I was just like, why is this map here? But it's... Over time, I've come to appreciate it. You also had, like, a massive, like billboard up here which you could trick shot off ah oh, that was amazing right moving on to launch and launch is going bang right there top of the instant classics launch is uh, like I, where do you start where do you start with launch first of all the massive rocket that like took off i know it didn't do much but when you're playing like search and destroy and you like there's a time on search and destroy where the rocket's going to take off you just plant the bomb underneath this massive rocket no one's going to that bomb site oh yeah you're just going to defuse that bomb as a bunch of rocket fuel just go, just lights inside you yeah 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 you, you do that you do that and just die uh in domination it was a bit different but it just added that extra like bit to the map where 
it was like especially with like tomahawking and throwing grenades because you'd throw a grenade at the rocket and it would just trickle down the rocket and just bounce off to the side but then once you take out the rocket it just like you've got this massive area to play with especially on like domination was so fun like you just hang around the b flag you've got the top areas you can like look in you've also got like the like the little bits on the side which you can trick shot off of you can suicide off the back you had that little bit you had like the little layers and then you had like the Oh, you had the rocket bit in the middle then you had like the two little balconies at the top and then you had the big back air oh it, it was just amazing for a map like you could you could literally spend days upon weeks on this map i don't know why they with some of these maps i don't know why they didn't do a more 24 7 feature i know everyone wants to play mr 24 7 which is our next one nuketown and for me nuketown on black ops 1 is again an instant classic but it's going to go here. It's better than firing range, not as good as like Hanoi or launch, but it, it it's just an instant classic. It just it's obviously it's taken place in a place which is going to be nuked, like it's a plastic like Indiana Jones type of um, place, which is like the 1940s where they just they were just testing nukes in these massive deserts, testing to see what survived, what didn't, and having like the Mason and wood sort of like easter egg there you just had you played so much of nuketown nuketown was just like insane now we get on to the latter and we have radiation and radiation once again radiation is going i, I i'm going to put it here but radiation is going to an instant classic because it was part of blackout in black ops 4 but that's not the important bit radiation it, oh, domination again domination games on radiation were just insane you had like um obviously the middle bit which you could have open or closed you had two little like um control panels either side you've got this one over here by the big oil things and then you've got one in the building you've also got like the oil tankers in the building which you could climb up on if you were really skilled at parkour then you've got like the like travelator leading to like the back bit area and you then you've got like the middle bit where you can just jump down from the sides or you can like overwatch from the thing and if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about i'm just thinking if like there's people who don't have no idea about these maps you're just going to be like what the hell is he talking about but like believe me like radiation it also had like a building one side building the other side and you've got the middle and then you've got like the bits that lead down to the middle there's like like little side huts but then you can look through the side huts you can get on top of the side huts you can just like Oh, the map the map is just like your oyster you can i'm gonna say this now i'm gonna be doing a series on this they don't make maps like these anymore these maps right here you're what you're looking at these are like the best of the best these are these maps they oh they just set the bar anyway i'm getting again ahead of myself i'm getting away from myself now moving on we have what i believe to be silo i believe this is silo so silo was a map sort of on a hill like this now at the bottom bit you had like some containers like this some like empty containers which you could run through you also had like a big tower which the snipers would go on and then you had like this middle area where it had like this overwatch bit but then like if you followed the spiral staircase down it led to like another bit of the map which is on the side but then that had like a big building next to it which the snipers could overwatch and then that was next to like a this map was, oh, it was such a big map and then you had like another building you had another big building which is full of snipers and then you just had like another another layer to it it was it was just insane um but with silo it did have a downside that it was not the most open of maps for like i don't know i don't know what i'm saying it's going it's going instant classic i can't think of anything wrong with it i was just about to put i was going to put it in great map about here-ish because I thought like I was thinking like okay it's pro it's difficult because I don't know why I've just I've literally just thought you know what screw it it's it's going an instant classic I loved playing silo I, I I really I can't think of anything wrong with silo to my knowledge I mean let me know what your thoughts are on this in the comment section but I I personally cannot think of anything wrong with silo it was a great map for like if you're a sniper you obviously had the um red gun areas I'd say the one issue is like campers with claymores but that's that you could just add this to any of these maps like any of these maps could be a fault for that so yeah i'm putting silo instant classic that was a really weird like idea there it's sort of like a i was just like oh this is just this is just amazing now moving on we have stadium the first dlc map that i played 
and it's 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 I'm sorry launch you'll get stadium is going right here and here's why stadium was just a great map it was it was obviously set just outside of a baseball stadium you had just like this big area in the middle you could also like go through the stadium on the side then you had like a little building up here you also had the back area it just like when the first strike dlc came out it was just stadium 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 kowloon stadium 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 discovery stadium 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 berlin wall stadium discovery stadium stadium like it, it, it just had stadium come up all the time and no one cared no one cared they was like oh is this a bit overplayed no stadium was just a great map where they remade it in black ops 2 for takeover and it was sort of like a mixture of takeover and launch because people these two maps were really difficult like people were wanted either this one or this one when it came to black ops 2 remakes so they went with stadium but they put a rocket taken off because when you look at launch you think i just want the rocket taken off that's all anyone wanted no no black ops 2 people there's a different video so yeah stadium is going instant classic it was a it was a beautiful dlc map it it was just i uh, it, it was just amazing moving on to the next map we have stockpile stockpile was again a um i think a few of these maps were a lot of these maps were ones from the campaign and you just you, like with stockpile it's one of these ones where it was a good map don't get me wrong it was a really good map then again there were times where it was just quite difficult to play because you've got the big building in the middle and the middle is sort of this big indoor area where you've got roofs along the top which you can op well, open roofs so you could chuck stuff inside like grenades semtexes tomahawks but then like the outside area didn't really have much to it like you had a few campers on the outside of the outside areas but ma mainly people use these buildings and i'm gonna put it in the great map one but i'm gonna put it far down because even though I love it, the great perks about this map is it's a big map. You have um, like doors in the middle as well. You can control doors. You have doors which you can close, which are great for domination. If you could just get on the B flag and you could just close the doors at your own will, they had to use like the side entrance or they had to use like an entrance downstairs. It would really screw up the enemies if the doors were closed. But it just it was like it would it just didn't it something about it doesn't click. But it's a great map. It's a great map. I'm putting it as a great map but it's like bottom of great map it's just leaning off of okay but i'd say I'd, I'd rather play it rather than put it in like a meh an okay map position i'm gonna run out of space now um next one next it, it's summit it's summit so summit oh where do i want to put this it's definitely going instant classic because it's summit but i don't know whereabouts on instant classic i think it's, it's got to go here it's got to go I'm sorry, Stadium. Oh God, what have I done? Summit is Summit is my favorite map. Summit is my favorite Black Ops One map. You have the middle area, the la the staircase, the little domination flag area here. You've got the little gondola on the side. You've got the big sniper tower. There's so many sniper towers in these maps. There's one here. There's one. Here. I, I've never really noticed that. If only this had, like Hanoi one was a sniper. Can you imagine? If Hanoi had this as a sniping tower. That would be insane. Anyway, we're talking about Summit. Summit was just, it, oh, it's just amazing. You had like the little cliff side along the edge. You got this bridge. Oh, it's just, it was just amazing. If you know, you know. Moving on to the next map, we have Villa. And Villa is set in a sort of like, it's, it's in a luxury resort villa, hence the name. And you've got like the um, big villa building where it's got all the like the bits it's got the like overwatch bit which you can watch the middle of the map the middle the sort of the middle of the map is like a circle which you can see on screen now and it had like this foundation but then the middle sort of made up of three different parts where you've got like a another bit where you're in a building and you're overlooking like the mid map area and then you've got like the bit to the side where you've got another house overlooking the mid map area excuse me and you can't really see the sniper lanes from each side which is sort of good because the snipers have a bit of an advantage but it's it's going to go in the okay section. It's going to go, I think there between like uh, hazard and array because it was an okay map. It was it was a really okay map. Even though the map had like all these designs to it, had like all this accessibility and these open areas and then these closed off areas and these sniper points and then these choke points. 
it, it it was an okay map. It was nothing nothing amazing though. It was nothing groundbreaking. Not one of those maps you want to go back to. But then again, if it came up, you'd be like, oh, you know, I play a bit of Villa. You know, I just, I just play a bit of Villa. Also, I had this weird like back area where it had like a big open area, and then like it, next you had like a little like pathway across. But then you could like people could flank it. It, it. it was a it was an okay map. Moving on, we have WMD. And WMD is going right here at the top of the great maps, and it's not in the it's not in an instant classic because WMD doesn't. Uh, there was something missing. There was something missing from WMD. Uh, you know when you just can't put your finger because you had the sniping bits here, you had the sniping bit here, you had the sniping bit up there, sniping bit up there. You had the middle area, which was just chaotic, but beautifully chaotic. You had like the Overwatch bits here, the Overwatch bits here, the Overwatch bits here. You had an RCXD hole again, so it just goes to great map. Oh, but it just it, it had something missing. I, I don't know what was missing. Because the Search and Destroy was great. Domination was great. It was just a great map. But it, it's just it's just not one of these. Unfortunately, it's just not one of these, and it feels weird saying Silo's better than WMD. But Silo was just like, like W. There's WMD, and then there's Silo. So moving on to the final map, we have Zoo, and oh, Zoo was a great map. I love, I loved, I love Zoo. These are all great maps. This is why. Oh God, don't don't put it there. I don't want to put it there. Okay, Zoo is a great map. Zoo is Zoo is a, a great map because you it was in an abandoned zoo, and you just you had like this sort of like broken monorail where you could walk across and then like you had the middle area which you could just there was also like an underground area you had like um, a little staircase there was so much to this map you even had like the aquarium area where you could go through but even though it was a great map a lot of the game was slow and you'd get like a lot of campers there was a building next to the end of a mo one of the monorails where people would just camp there all game and because of the camping, it's just going to go into the okay bit. But I don't know where to put I think I'm going to put it there. It wasn't as bad as Array. No, it wasn't as good as Array, sorry. But it wasn't as bad as Cracked. It was sort of like... That's where we're going it, to... It was It was that map. Zoo, it felt very empty as well. Given it's supposed to be a zoo. But it was an abandoned zoo. So it was, it, it was just one of those maps where it was okay. Like sometimes you could play zoo. Sometimes you couldn't. And Jesus, that was that was me ranking twenty six maps in Black Ops. What I'm I dread doing the Modern Warfare Three one. They they had like forty maps, but as you can see, um, so just to go through with Instant Classic, I'm just gonna have a look back just to see if there's anything I want to change, maybe switch. But that has been the Black Ops One maps ranked from best to worst. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Leave a like. If you have enjoyed, comment down below which map is your favorite on Black Ops 1. Subscribe down below if you are new to this channel and tap that notification bell to be the first to know when I upload. And that's been it for me. Thank you for watching and stay epic.